So we are asked to determine whether this series is convergent or divergent, and we can obtain a bit of a clue from the answer boxes down here. It tells us that there's something going on with a p-series. So our goal is to rewrite the series in the form of a p-series. Now we all recall perhaps that a p-series takes on the following form. We have a sum beginning at n equals 1 and growing to infinity of 1 over n raised to the power of p. So somehow we have to take the series and write it in that form. And to understand how to do that, let's rewrite the series. Let's start out with the first term, which is just 1. And why don't we rewrite that as 1 over 1 to the power of 2. We will see why that is beneficial in just a moment. Notice that is equivalent to 1, if you want to try to simplify that. For the next term, we have 1 fourth, but we're going to rewrite the 4 as 2 to the power of 2. For 1 ninth, we will rewrite the 9 as 3 to the power of 2. And by now, you probably see the pattern. The 16 will be 4 to the power of 2, and the 25 will be 5 to the power of 2. And on and on it goes. Now, to understand how to recraft this in the form of a p-series, let's say that the first term has an n value equivalent to 1, and the second term has an n equivalent to 2, third term n equals 3, and so on. Now, if you notice, you can begin to understand that in the denominator, we take the value of n and we end up squaring it. So here we would have n raised to the power of 2, like so. You can confirm that by looking at the next term. When n equals 2, we take that value of 2 and we square it. When n equals 3, we take that value of n and we square it, and so on. When n equals 4, we take 4 and square it. So no matter what n is, we square it in the denominator. The numerator is always a 1, so we can just write it like that. Now, because this goes on forever, we have to write it in terms of sigma notation. We started out with an n value equal to 1, and we're going to go forever and ever until n approaches infinity. Now we can begin to understand why our series is a p-series. It matches the form. Ask yourself, okay, what is the value of p in this case? We can see, perhaps, that this number right here coincides with the value of p in the general form. So in other words, what we're saying is this is a p-series with p equal to 2. Now we remember that as long as our p-value was greater than 1, then we have a convergent p-series. If the value of p had been less than or equal to 1, then it would have been divergent. But as long as your p-value, which is 2 in this case, is greater than 1, then your p-series is convergent. So that would be the correct answer to the question.